In a previous video, we talked about using PCR as a tool in molecular diagnostics. In this video, we're going to talk about yet another molecular diagnostic tool called ELISA. No, it's not named after the person who invented it, but rather ELISA stands for Enzyme Linked Immunosorbent Assay. Assay means a test. Immunosorbent because ELISA is an immunoassay. It checks for interactions between immune particles like antigens and antibodies. I'll explain in just a while what this enzyme linked means. There are different types of ELISAs like direct, indirect and sandwich. In this video, we're going to focus on this sandwich type of ELISA. We'll talk about direct and indirect in other videos. So ELISA has a lot of applications. It can be used to diagnose diseases like HIV, COVID-19, a lot of genetic disorders and types of cancers as well. Before we talk about what this sandwich ELISA is, let's familiarize ourselves with some concepts related to immunology. We're going to be talking about these terms frequently in the video of antigens and antibodies. Antigens are nothing but pathogenic proteins that induce the immune response in hosts. So if it's a pathogen like a bacteria, it's going to have a protein on its surface that is going to induce the immune response in the host and that is called the antigen and in response to the antigen the proteins produced by the host is known as the antibodies so antibodies are highly specific and they are targeted against specific antigens so if this is antigen a only antibody A can bind with this antigen. Nothing else can bind with this. This forms the basis of all types of ELISA. This specific antigen antibody interaction is what is being used in ELISA to test for the presence of bacteria and other pathogenic particles in the sample. So now we'll move on to what is sandwich ELISA. So sandwich ELISA and basically any other type of ELISA is performed on these micro titer plates. These are either glass or plastic plates that have small wells in them like hollow wells inside which we will be performing the ELISA procedure. But first off, what is this sandwich? So picture a sandwich. How does a sandwich look like? It has a piece of bread, a slice of bread, below which there are going to be some vegetables. And below that vegetables, we're going to have another piece of bread. So keep this structure of the sandwich in mind when we talk about sandwich ELISA. So the process of sandwich ELISA begins with the well coated with capture antibodies. Capture antibodies, these blue Y-shaped thingies here, they are antibodies against a specific antigen. Usually the antigen that we're expecting to find in the sample, the bacterial protein or the viral protein that we're expecting to find in the sample, the well is coated with capture antibodies against that specific antigen. And the well is treated to make sure that only these antibodies are bound to the well and nothing else has bound to the well. Once the well is coated with the capture antibodies, we're going to add our sample. The sample could be a blood sample that is potentially going to contain the antigen that we're targeting. So the antigen from the patient, if present, is going to bind with this specific antibody, this capture antibody here. And if the antigen is present, we're going to see the antigen antibody binding. AB stands for antibodies and AG stands for antigens by the way. Now once this is done, once the sample is added, we're going to wash this well with a buffer solution to remove any free antigens. Why is this important? You see the sample could have many other proteins that are not needed here for this test. The presence of those proteins could give either a false positive or a false negative result. So to avoid that, the well is washed with a buffer solution. But now a question arises. How do we visualize or quantify this reaction? First of all, how do we make sure that the antigen and the antibody have bound together? These are microscopic interactions happening at the molecular level. We cannot see it with the naked eye. How do we visualize it? And how do we quantify the number of antigens present in the sample? 
this is where the sandwich part and the enzyme linked part comes into the picture so once the antigen is added to the wells another antibody called the enzyme linked secondary antibody is added this magenta color with the orange blob here this is the enzyme linked secondary antibody this is the antibody and this is the enzyme what is this enzyme linked secondary antibody this is also against this specific type of antigen and it's linked with an enzyme usually the enzyme that is commonly used is horseradish peroxidase or hrp now here you can see the sandwich structure first you have the capture antibody then you have the antigen then you have the enzyme linked secondary antibody this is why this is called the sandwich elisa so once the enzyme linked secondary antibody is added again the well is washed with a buffer solution this is important and i'll explain in just a while why so after it is washed to this well we're going to add the substrate for this enzyme so an enzyme is something that converts a substrate to a product right the substrate for this hrp enzyme is called tetramethyl benzidine these white color dots here these represent this tetramethyl benzidine and this is added to the well here's where washing with a buffer is very important you see if the antigen is not present in the sample then this secondary antibody would have nothing to bind with so when you're washing with the buffer solution it will be washed away so even if you add the substrate there won't be any reaction because there is no enzyme for the reaction to happen on the other hand if the antigens are present then the antibodies the secondary antibodies will bind to the antigen and then the substrate will be acted upon by the enzyme and once this happens we can see a color change in the well tetramethyl benzidine is colorless but in the presence of this horseradish peroxidase it is converted into a product that is blue in color so a color change from colorless to blue indicates the presence of the antigen so a color change indicates a positive result which means the sample contains the antigen but no color change means that there is a negative result because there are no antigens in the sample so a color change is a qualitative indication of the presence of the antigen what about a quantitative indication well the intensity can be quantified using methods like calorimetry and that will tell us how much of the antigen is present in the sample higher the intensity more there is the antigen and antibody binding so this is the entire concept of sandwich elisa the sandwich comes from the fact that there is a capture antibody to which the antigen binds and to this antigen antibody complex another secondary antibody that is linked to an enzyme is added making it a sandwich i'm making you hungry aren't i